Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Justin Aaron Krantz, and I'm here to share with you kind of the story of how we are transforming the developer experience at Bloomberg. For those of you that are not familiar with Bloomberg, we have up here on screen kind of some screenshot of what our uh, Bloomberg professional service looks like. And this is basically what uh, our traders and kind of people in the capital market use every day to basically try and understand the fire hose of information from the market, from the news, all of that. And basically what our goal is is to try to constantly improve that service. And how do we do that? Well, one of the other things that we have to keep in mind is that we provide a mission critical service. So we have this tweet here from one of our users, you know, that basically is when we're down, there are major uh, impacts to this. And so, you know, basically for people on Wall Street uh, users, it's just like Facebook being down. And so it's very important for us to provide that mission critical infrastructure. So one of the other challenges with our service is that basically all of the world's kind of uh, financial information flows through our system. And we really can't control that, but we have to basically distribute that to all of our customers. And so what you see here is basically a graph from 2008 till almost fairly recently, and you can just see this exponential curve. Now what's also fascinating about this market data is there are peaks in this basically due to world events that are completely maybe outside of our control. Recently, earlier this year, we passed 100 billion market messages in a single day that our system has to be able to handle. Now, also, in addition to market data, we have news. We have about a million news stories that are published on our platform. We, at Bloomberg, we have over 2,500 reporters writing articles every day, breaking news, but we also consume all of the world's um, news stories. We have index of 500 million stories, about 500 stories per second are ingested. And we try to aim for about 100 milliseconds to have this available to our customers and with about 1.5 million saved searches in our, uh, that our users are constantly using. Now, how do we achieve all of this? And actually, what's interesting is we're very much a polyglot organization, and pretty much every language under the sun we have. In actuality, most of our code is actually JavaScript. So we actually are one of the largest JavaScript uh, shops in the world. We have a lot of Ruby. We have a lot of C++. We have a lot of Python. And yes, we even have a fair bit of Java and Spring usage. We have Fortran. We have OCaml. Pretty much every language you've heard, we run it. Now, one of the things that we stress at Bloomberg is trying to be fast and be able to be responsive to our customers. We do over 4,000 production deployments a day, on average, one per developer every single day. And basically, this is one of the values of what we try to do is get that responsiveness to our clients and be able to respond very fast. And so the issue is when you come to Bloomberg, it's like, yes, you are going to be making changes that are going out to our customers. We do 4,000 deployments a day. So the challenge that we have as kind of the developer experience is how do we go even faster? 4,000 production deployments, that's not enough. We need to go faster. How do we get to that next level? And really, that's focusing on three things, kind of the culture, the tools, and the platform. And really, what it boils down to is self-service and everything that we offer. If we have to ask for permission, we failed. So if you take a step back, does this actually matter? And do culture, tools, and platform impact the architecture? Those of you who are familiar with Conway's law, it says basically the structure of a software represents the the communication structure of the organization. And so by doing this shift and this transformation, we believe that we'll further increase the resiliency of our service, make us more responsive to our customers. So how have we done that? So kind of one of the things that we've done is basically try to promote a culture of contributing externally into the open source community. Now, that's very critical in understanding the ecosystem. Each project, each code base is different. They may have a different set of norms. And what we have to do is try to understand how to engage with that ecosystem and contribute in an intelligent manner. I talked before about our new search platform that is primarily leveraging Apache Lucene and Solar. Well, we have a number of contributors to the Apache Solar project um, that work for Bloomberg that are focused on the problems that we have and basically trying to make Solar handle this amount of traffic. We also uh, 
kind of use uh, Chromium for a lot of our rendering on the front end side. Well, how do we manage that? We actually contribute kind of patches, but we also uh, participate in standard organizations like the W3C to basically improve the capability of the specifications to be able to handle our use cases. Now, that said, we're also not afraid to publish opinionated code due to our focus on resiliency. Talked before about kind of the unique challenges that we have at Bloomberg. Well, one of the things is that um, we think about and how we put software together may be a little bit different. So, about uh, <clears throat> we um, publish how we um, construct our OpenStack and our Hadoop deployments, and they're available up on GitHub uh, under the Apache license. Anybody can download them. You can run OpenStack the way we do at Bloomberg. You can run Hadoop in its ecosystem the way we do it at Bloomberg. And it's very opinionated. And it's fair to say not everybody could use it, but this is kind of how we try to think about how do you do it at scale and do it resiliently. That said, not everything that we have is going to be open sourced. And so one of the things that we've done is participating with others in something called the inner source commons with PayPal and others. And basically, how do you promote the culture of contribution within your development organization, I mean, within the entire organization at all? And what we've done is basically follow some of these principles from the open source community and try to apply them to this code that is very specific to Bloomberg. And one of the things that we do is create a contributing markdown file in every repository that is open for this inner source and basically say, here are the norms of the project. Here's how you contribute. Here is a code review. Here's all of the, the rules of the engagement for this project. And now pull requests can come from anybody in a company you know, into this project. And as long as it follows this process, good chances are pretty good that someone will review it and merge it. Now, we've also basically uplifted kind of the tooling that we make available, not just the culture, but the tooling as well. And so all these tools of Vagrant and Jenkins and Chef and Artifactory and GitHub, and it's really about kind of making these self-service tools available to our developers to make them be able to do continuous integration, be able to try out new platforms, be able to do automation, do all of those things. And that's very critical for us. Kind of lastly, when you think about the platform, what we've done is we started on a journey of over four years ago, bringing OpenStack into our environment. And now we're basically bringing in Cloud Foundry into our environment. And really what this is, is it kind of enables this platform. And it enables a self-service platform where you don't have to ask for permission. Now, the great thing about these communities and Cloud Foundry and OpenStack is they're very strong community-led uh, platform and get this very great ecosystem of developers around the world that are able to participate in constantly making it better. And in addition to this, kind of as Sam mentioned, you know, you have this ecosystem of services and applications that are written to be able to use things like Cloud Foundry or OpenStack and be able to use that in a way that supports our developers to uh, be faster. So thank you. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed kind of a little bit of the sharing of uh, kind of how we do transformed our uh, developer experience at Bloomberg. Uh, feel free to kind of continue the conversation. Uh, feel free to find me on Twitter, send me an email, find me in the hall. Uh, thank you very much and have a wonderful show.